Welcome to Prime News, coming to you today from Amsterdam, the site of the European Cancer Congress. Jan and I are very pleased to be joined today by Margaret Hutka, locum consultant in the GI unit at the Royal Marsden Hospital in the UK. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you for having me. I wanted to start by Kicking this off with just a brief look at the role of immunotherapy in the treatment of cancer, it's an area of a great deal of interest here at the ECC. There was an abstract presented by Jean-Charles Soria um, in the lung preferred session looking at the role of PD-1 checkpoint inhibitors. This was a really interesting, fairly large phase 1A trial, and it was examining an anti-PD-1 antibody. Although there were several different tumor types that were included, he focused specifically on the non-small cell lung cancer subset. What he found in the group of 53 non-small cell lung cancer patients was that overall there was a response rate of 23 percent in these, this group of highly pretreated patients. Um, not only was this a fairly significant response rate, but what was really remarkable was the durability of the responses. Every single patient who responded is continuing to respond even now, and we're 48 weeks into this study. These were rapid responses, and one of the greatest benefits, which was kind of surprising to our, for all of us to learn, was it was the smokers who achieved the greatest benefit from this form of therapy. So this has opened up the dialogue a lot about immunotherapy and where it fits now into the management of many solid tumors. That's, uh, that's fascinating data. I was really. very amazed, yeah. So, Margaret, question for you. Mm -hmm. Given the, the increased interest recently in immunotherapeutic approaches, has the golden era of immunotherapy for cancer treatment finally arrived, or is this yet another false start? Well, it does appear to be the beginning of a new era, definitely. Uh, whether we have reached um, the ultimate cure for cancer, that is something we probably, no one is going to um, hazard such a term and such a phrase at, at this time. But definitely, uh, treating cancer by reverting the um, um, the, uh, the ability of cancer to, to escape the, uh, the, uh, um, the, um, uh, the immunological response. That is something that is definitely probably the best way to, um, to target. And definitely it has proven very efficacious in this subset of patients. So it does appear like this is probably achieving the highest um, response rate for now. Yeah, again, extremely exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, there is so much going on now uh, in terms of new target-specific therapies, immunotherapy, and uh, I guess I'm wondering uh, how important are big congresses like ECC for young oncologists to go to get their education? Is it, is it kind of the, the highest priority, or how do you balance your education? Uh, there are several ways uh, for young oncologists to gain further education in oncology, and one of them is face-to-face -face meetings, such as um, a meeting at a congress like this. Um, others, obviously, that um, are so becoming very popular and um, that Prime is one of them helping to uh, enhance this education via web um, and webinars um, and then the others such as European School of Oncology enabling, other to, enabling to log in and to listen to a discussion, to, to uh, post questions at uh, a live time. Those are the, the, the other options but, and, and several others, but the uh, face-to-face uh, learning opportunity is is probably one of the best for many people and most um, most efficacious, I think, because it is a time to where you can where, where young oncologists um, uh, become stimulated by what they hear and they can bounce out their ideas with their peers uh, at the same time. And it's also um, it's quite important to be a part um, of these live meetings, sit down in a lecture room, and to listen to key opinion leaders deliver the, the talk and 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 question uh, what they hear. So, Margaret, did you have specific activities at this meeting for young oncologists? Uh, yes, uh, in my capacity as the president of the Flims Alumni uh, Club, I have uh, I've organized two sessions. One was the society session, the other was a workshop in which I uh, invited um, wonderful speakers. 
um, from the US. So there was Professor Lajos Pushtai, there was uh, Professor Jorge Esfirio, Professor Alexander Lazar, and of course uh, from Europe, Fatima Cardoso, Jan Bogertz. So we had the statistical approach learning and as, as well as, as the molecular biology. So this first session was focused on understanding the, the new methodologies that are used to understand cancer. To understand how it works and how we can how we can target it, so to go down into the deepest into the methodologies and understanding, which is something that um, many medical oncologists would like to understand better, especially in the early start of the training. Well, congratulations! Those are types of opportunities we certainly didn't have uh, early in our career. Fantastic. So, Margaret, what do you consider? the special needs and challenges from an educational standpoint for young oncologists? I think uh, this, these have to be um, considered separately um, in Europe. There are different challenges in, in uh, the former Eastern countries and the West, and um, the needs are obviously different. Um, probably um, for the young oncologists, um, the, but the major challenge is to have a quick and, a, and accessible source of information that would uh, bring them up to date with what is going on. In, during your training, one needs to know everything from all the areas, so you cannot focus early in your career. So it, that's probably the challenge. So towards your exams, you need to be informed on several tumor sites. So I think that's where um, this quick accessibility of up-to-date information is, is key. Mm -hmm. And I think what is a big challenge is to have a mentor in your career, mm -hmm. to have one person who is going to advise you and guide you throughout your career. And uh, that is extremely helpful because that allows to pace your education, your time, and to uh, plan your time uh, with regard to the clinical work and your research. Um, and to find a mentor, to have a mentor that is, um, you either are lucky or you may be less lucky. Um, then again, um, I, think, I think being able to, in oncology these days, it's important to be able to um, divide your time, to, to, to plan your time um, for understanding the clinical aspects as well as what we have to know from molecular biology and how it will affect our work in the future and where we are at the moment. Well, Margaret, I'm, I'm extremely reassured that the future of oncology will be in the hands of people like you. Thank you. Well, it's been such a pleasure to have a chance to talk with you, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, we're kicking off Prime News, and I can't think of a better person to help us do that. So thank thanks you. so much, and I want to thank all of our viewers for joining us as well.